So can I ask one question? How many of you are glaucoma specialist here? Okay. Anyone? What's that stuff? So do you get uh, glaucoma from the retinal pathology? I think many, many, many. So that is uh, my topics actually. As a glaucoma surgeon, I find many patients, they come from retina colleagues. So I'm again thankful to Dr. Parthaviswas who invited for this presentation. And the topics is glaucoma from retinal disease or pathology, how we deal it as a glaucoma specialist. Next, not going. One slide is not progressing. Okay. So uh, we know that uh, retina and glaucoma specialist work together side by side because uh, many patients, they come uh, from retina and many patients also go from us to retina. So if you look that glaucoma specialists have this kind of complication after their surgery, like choroidal detachment, ocular decompression, retinopathy, hemorrhage, hypotonic maculopathy, malignant glaucoma, bit symptoms, all these conditions, we refer the patient to our retina colleague. On the other hand, similarly, our colleagues send many patients with higher intraocular pressure and glaucoma, like RD surgery with scleral buckle, parts plana vitrectomy, intravitreal gas injection, silicon oil injection, intravitreal steroid injection, complications from retinal ischemia. Dr. Billal is here, he is a retina specialist, I think he understands. He agrees that we get this kind of patient from them. Now, the, uh, Dr. Niroz Kumar et al. found in a study that what are the percentage of RD surgery and glaucoma. It is about, you can see here, 4.4 percent. Pars plana vitrectomy may produce up to 20 percent of glaucoma. Silicon oil injection can produce 4.8 to 48 percent. Intravitreal gas injection up to 20 percent. Intravitreal steroid injection can produce 79 percent of glaucoma, 11 to 79 percent. So let us see the retina surgery with the scleral buckle. The, the retina surgeon, they give this buckle to make the, against the scleral to relieve the traction of the retinal tear and also for the facility resolution of the subretinal fluid. But what happens? They also mechanically close the angle of the anterior chamber. That's why there is higher intraocular pressure. So in this case, we cannot do the laser aerotomy. That will not help. Rather, we can do laser aeroplasty. Along with the medical management and topical corticosteroids, cycloplasics, and of course, medical management. But ultimately, majority of our patients do not relieve the intraocular pressure. So we have to go for surgical treatment. And you see, many patients need trabeculectomy, but trabeculectomy has a poor success, up to 53% of five years survival. So glaucoma drainage device is the answer, having better success rate up to 80%. So let us see a, a case with a scleral buckle after the retinal uh, detachment surgery. Then you can see the buckle here. And I asked the retina colleague that shall I uh, remove the buckle? He said it, it is done only a few months, so we cannot remove. So what to do? We put the Ahmed glaucoma bulb just behind the, uh, the buckle so then suture it with the sclera. So uh, fortunately, the patient did very well after the uh, Ahmed glaucoma bulb implant. Uh, the high intraocular pressure after retinal sur surgery. Again, the parts plan of vitrectomy PPV is most common surgery done by the retina surgeon nowadays. But it still may have the glaucoma, especially if the tamponade is gas or silicon oil. And treatment is medical management first. If it does not work, then you can go for the glaucoma surgery like trabeculectomy. And majority time it does not work, so you have to go the Ahmed glaucoma bulb or the barbell bulb or the RD uh, produced in India from Orolab is really nice uh, implant uh, to do. Interpretal gas injection sometimes cause the higher intraocular pressure and AGM anti medication usually uh, control the pressure and laser aerotomy actually works better because the gas is deposited behind the iris in the, post in the inferiorly. So definitely if you do a laser inferiorly it works and helps in the decrease of intraocular pressure. Silicon oil injection is again commonly used. Now it is less commonly, but previously it was more, it also produces high intraocular pressure. 
and up to 48 percent is possible. And again, in this patient, the anti glaucoma medication doesn't work much. You need to do surgical treatment, especially the glaucoma drainage devices. Intrapetrial steroid injection, the retina people, when they find the macular edema from diabetic retinopathy, UVITs, retinal vascular occlusions, choroidal neovasculation, post cataract surgery, sometimes they use the intravitreal steroid. And if the patient is a steroid responder, definitely there is a possibility of glaucoma. And the percent is 11 to 79 percent. So a lot of people, they suffer. And most important treatment is stop the steroid if possible. If not, then you can use the less potent steroid for the high IOP. As Dr. Shao presented here, these are the cases SLT works better. And light study also found that if your intraocular pressure is higher after the steroid responder, you can do SLT, it comes down. And even after four to six months, you may not use any glaucoma medication. The patient's uh, structural function becomes better and physiologically the people lose better without any medication even. Now, finally, retinal ischemia is a very big subject. You can see hundreds of causes. The retina doctor will understand hundreds of causes that from causes retinal ischemia, and from the retinal ischemia may produce the neovascular glaucoma. And we know the pathology, retinal ischemia, release of angiogenesis factor, produces the new vessels in the iris, in the angle, and produces the neovascular glaucoma. Different stages are there, pre-rubiosis, rubiosis, open angle, and angle closure. Actually, after the invention of the uh, intravitreal bevacizumab, ranibizumab, the management became very easy because with this injection, the new vessels comes down, resolution is there, and after that you can put the laser, you can do any surgery, especially the valve surgery, the results are really better nowadays. You can see in this patient, the, after the injection, the rubus aridis has gone, the patient doing better. Open angle glaucoma is the stage where we should uh, start in invention because uh, because from here a reversible position is possible even sexual vision is possible but if you go to the angle closer glaucoma then it is really difficult to do the reverse of the condition because this is the stage where the pressure is most of the time we get 50 60 70 like that and angle is close even you do give the intravitreal vivacizumab or ranimizumab and you cannot release the pass so vision is really poor in these cases and though you have to treat comprehensive treatment not the only glaucoma you have to treat the patient his diabetes or her diabetes if his uveitis treat all these things medically then of course anti glaucoma medication except the pg analogs and pilocarpine these are not in indicated in the neovascular glaucoma especially in the angle closure in inflammatory stage so you can do both surgery but you see here the surgery, surgery trabeculectomy result is not good, up to 61%. But during the trabeculectomy, we make a modified trabeculectomy utilizing the higher concentration of MMC and long exposure time. And I do a larger flap for this kind of patient so that there is larger opening of the uh, trabeculectomy and ultimately this, the chance of your uh, possibility of uh, in decrease intercorporate pressure is better. Uh, lastly, I'll tell the tube shards is the choice for the neovascular glaucoma because most of the trabeculectomy actually it fails. So uh, whenever you put a tube, most of the time we get good result. And you can see here, but the modification is there. People are using, I also use the MMC, the collagen matrix in during the bulb implantation because routinely we don't do it. But in this sort of cases, if you utilize the Anti-metabolites, MMC or 5-FU, or the collagen matrix, the results are better. Cyclobration is reserved for those cases who cannot see well, painful blind eye. We can do the uh, endoscopic cyclopotocoagulation or transvascular cyclopotocoagulation. So in conclusions, I would say glaucoma from retinal pathology is not uncommon. With early diagnosis, it can be successfully treated by medical or laser or surgical treatment. Neovascular glaucoma from retinal pathology is a potentially blinding disease. Aggressive, comprehensive management with anti-VZF, anti-glaucoma medication, laser, and surgical treatment with control of high intraocular pressure and the underlying etiology is crucial to minimize the visual loss. Though 
this is refractory glaucoma, but with due treatment, it is possible to give back the vision to the patient. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Nazrul. Thank you. We are, we are encroaching in the next session.